All right, what's going on guys? Welcome to the video. So it's early Sunday morning right now. I think it's like 6.30 in the morning. I'm about to meet up with one, maybe two guys at Lincoln High School just to get a little training session in. So it should be good. I love doing these training sessions super early, especially on like Saturdays and Sundays when a lot of people sleep in. It's kind of weird. I, get, I just get like this weird like motivation from it of like I'm working while people are sleeping. It's it's kind of messed up, but, but it works for me and I always like really enjoy these. So let's let's get it. just got to Lincoln. I know for sure that one other guy, Alan, is coming. Alan is like an academy player for the Portland Timbers, so we'll at least get a training session in. Maybe one more, but we'll see. It's cold, foggy, but it's got a really cool like kind of vibe to it with like the crows and everything. It's very Portland right now, which I'm which I like. And I'm really excited to go back to San Diego here soon and then train the complete opposite where it's 75 degrees, sunny, and then you go to the beach after. It's uh it's a good mix. All right, just training with uh Alan Alan, you want to give, what's your full name? Alan Casey. What what school do you go to? Grant. Grant? Grant High School, yeah. And you're a right back as well, right? Yeah, right back right now. I'm an attacking player, but the yeah. Timbers have got me in the right back position. Uh, and then, so now you're right in that next stage of like maybe college, maybe yeah. maybe going over to Europe, doing yeah. something like that. Yeah, I'm from Spain, so uh, I got a EU citizenship. So. Hablo Espanol? Hablo Espanol. <laughs> <laughs> Mi Espanol está perfecto. Si? Si. Ah, que bien. No. Hablamos <laughs> ahora. No, no, it's not good. Um, but we'll get a training session in and uh, I'll try to make it a little bit like crossing right back, like winger specific. Yeah, yeah let's do it. Alright, sweet. sweet. Weird, huh? My whole thing is like, it's, I literally just try to train like...
We just finished the training session. What did you uh, What did you think? I really liked it. I enjoyed the intensity yeah. of this training. You said something that was pretty cool too. You're like, you watched some of my videos when you were over in Spain, right? Or where were you? Yeah, well, yeah. So I I lived in Spain for 11 years and then I moved to Idaho and then that's where I started watching you. Okay, Idaho, yeah. And then yeah. so, and now you're watching in Idaho and now you're at this field training, huh? Yes. It's kind of weird. I was, watching, I was watching you train in this field. I never knew where this exactly was and now, now we're here training, it's crazy. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Um, but like I said before, like you're a senior in high school at Grant and you're kind of deciding between like if you should go the college route or if you should go the like over to Europe and yeah. try to go pro. And yeah. obviously like you haven't done it yet, but like mm -hmm. what's just, what's going through your head right now? I mean, I certainly want to follow my passions and, and see where how far I can go in the sport. But for sure Europe is uh, one of my main thinking points right now because as I said, I'm from there and it would be easy for me to go there and with my citizenship and everything. Certainly it would be smart to get a degree because you always have to have a plan B, I guess. Yeah. But, um, I mean, there's definitely also an option of going to college in Europe and, and playing club soccer there and see see where it goes from there. Yeah. Yeah. And so when do you have to make the decision? Do you have like a timeline? I mean, because you're graduating this spring. Yeah, I'm graduating. This so it's basically spring. within the year, like yeah, a full year from year. now. Yeah, I'll see. I mean, definitely moving to Europe by myself would be a big leap outside of my comfort zone. But yeah, it would be special. Yeah, for sure. but it'd be exciting. I'd be, I'd, I'd learn a lot for sure. Do you think you would miss out like not having like the college, uh, like lifestyle of like hanging out, like the in the dorms, like going to classes? Do you think yeah, you would miss that? Maybe, but. You're, it's also following your dreams. Yeah. For me, I think like the reason I went to college because I just wasn't as good as Alan was even at 17. Like I wasn't. I was. I needed another four years of development and training and everything before. And I still even from then kind of struggled a little bit to, with the speed of play going to the pro level. I just don't think I was ready. So I think it's good that I got. I didn't get the degree, but I got close to the. <laughs> no, I dropped out. But I still think it was good just for the development four more years. But I can see how like four years is like. It's a long time, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, anyway, Alan, thanks for coming out training. Um, <laughs> Thank you so and much. Uh, is there anything you want to say? You want to do a shout out or anything? Uh, shout out to my teammates from the Timbers Academy. I know a lot of you watch this. <laughs> uh, we need to. We need to all come out here and train with Matt. When I when I come back in January, let's yeah. do that. Yeah.
Okay, so it's like one in the afternoon. I want to grab the haircut, trim the beard, shower it all up. Um, but really good training session this morning. And then I also really want to go even more depth into the college soccer versus trialing in Europe. I actually made a full flow chart already to really kind of discuss about looking into your situation where you are right now and trying to find out if it's worth it to go over Europe or if it would be smarter to stay and go to college. So I'll do that after lunch right now. But for lunch, just a big plate of some beef and broccoli that my mom made for dinner last night. So I'm gonna eat this up. Thank you, mom. <laughs> so I'm gonna eat this up and, uh, and then I'll talk more about college soccer versus Europe. So this question of college soccer versus trialing in Europe and what's better is such a difficult question to answer because it really depends so much on your personal situation, uh, your goals, what you really want in life, where, what opportunities you have. So it's hard to give a general answer to everybody. So I made a flow chart that really kind of helps kind of narrow down your train of thought and gives you my suggestion based off of your situation and your circumstances. So if we just dive right into it, We'll start with the most basic question of all. Do you want to play professionally? And if the answer is no, I don't really understand why you'd want to be trialing over in Europe, then go to college. Simple as that. And if the answer is yes, then now let's dive a little bit deeper to really figure out what is best for you. The next most basic question I want to ask is what's most important in the grand scheme of your life? I really broke it down into three different answers. We'll start very simple. The first answer is playing professionally is the most important thing in my life, that I have no desire to attend college. Just as simple as that, go abroad. That's my suggestion to you. But before you do, you really have to make sure that you're ready. So I would have a few questions to ask yourself before you go. Like, are you actually at a good enough level to have a chance over in Europe? Do you have enough money to support yourself abroad for a few months or even up to a year? Do you have a European passport or visa? Do you have any contacts or connections to help you communicate with teams or obtain trials? And if you answered no to any or most of those questions, it might be worth it to stay at home and to build up your connections, to build up your ability and to save more money by playing with a local NPSL, UPSL or USL League Two team to really kind of make more of these answers yeses, you know, make sure that you are at the level, make sure that you have enough money to support yourself, try to meet new coaches and meet new teammates that might have connections over in Europe. So that would be my suggestion is, yeah, go over to Europe but make sure that you're ready to it and ask yourself all these questions first. So now now, if we go back up to the top, what's most important in the grand scheme of your life? Now, if the answer to that question is financial success and stability, and that yes, you would love to play professionally if a great opportunity arises, but your education and career is more important to you than playing professionally, then my advice to you is play collegiately. And if the opportunity arises to play professionally, either halfway through your career or at the very end, if you get drafted or something, then you can make that decision at that time what's best for you. But the collegiate route is definitely something that I would recommend if if your main goal in life is really to have a good financial stability and set up for your future self and family. Now, the majority of you that are really in the situation of trying to decide what's best for you are probably in this category, the third category of both. Soccer and my education are extremely important to me. I want to play professionally, but I also am a good student and I want to continue my education. So if that's your answer to that question of what's most important in the grand scheme of your life, then I would really even try to dive deeper and ask, okay, well, what opportunities are available to you right now? So I'm going to break it up into three different answers that I most commonly get just to simplify things. But number one, you either have a ton of college offers and some really good contacts abroad. Number two, you have college offers, but you don't have any contacts abroad. Or number three, you don't have any college offers or any contacts abroad. If we go to that first answer that you have many college offers and some contacts abroad, for example, like what Alan just said this morning, um, my suggestion to you is that you really are in a great situation. This decision will come down to your gut feeling after really researching your opportunities and weighing out the pros and cons. So talk to the coaches. If you can, visit the teams or visit the schools. Talk to other people in similar situations and see what they did. Sit down with your parents or your family and really discuss things out and really try to figure out what your gut feeling is on your situation. Things that I really think that you should consider are that the window to play professionally in Europe closes quickly with age. Four years in college is a long time to not be in a pro setup. Being abroad isn't as glamorous as it appears. Will you miss your friends, your family? Are you going to miss out on that college lifestyle or that college experience? Um, do you have a European passport or visa? Because making it professionally as a foreigner is much, much more difficult than making it professionally in your own country. And lastly, what's your current financial situation? Do you need those scholarships? And that's the opportunity that you cannot pass up or, or are you the opposite, that you can pay for school if need be, so you wanna go over to Europe, support yourself for a few years, see if it works out. If it doesn't, come back and attend college 
budge on your own dime. These are just things that I really think you should consider and really ask yourself if you have those contacts over in Europe and you have college offers and you're really trying to decide between the two. So if we go back up to the second answer of, I have college offers, but I don't have any contacts abroad, then I would really suggest playing collegiately for at least a year. You're gonna build up a lot more connections, even possibly some connections abroad with foreign teammates, or maybe your coach might have a couple players or have some connections abroad as well. You're gonna get into a good setup where you're training almost every day of the week. And then if the right opportunity presents itself, or if you're not happy in the school, you can always drop out and try your chances elsewhere. You can drop out after your very first semester. You can drop out after a year, two years, four years, or whatever and really take that chance when the opportunity or the connections really establish themselves and you feel in your gut that it's the right time to really go abroad. It's just really hard to turn down a for sure spot and a team with a good education and really good training to roll the dice and go over to Europe when you have no connections at all and you don't have a for you don't have a European passport and you might not have the money to support yourself. That's just a very risky situation to do, especially when you have something that's exactly what you want that will continue your education and continue your your growth as a footballer. And so my next suggestion for you is if you do stay in college is to build up your resume, build up your ability and also build up connections by playing with NPSL, UPSL, or USL League Two teams. And then lastly, if you end up enjoying your time playing collegiate soccer and you stay for four years, then you can always take the chance to play professionally abroad afterwards. You just have to realize that yes, going abroad when you're 21, 22 is going to be a lot more difficult than when you're going abroad as a 17, 18 year old. And then lastly, if you go back up here again, um, if we're looking at the opportunities available to you right now and you do not have any college offers and you have no connections abroad, then my suggestion for you is to really think about this because if you have no offers to even play in college, even at the JUCO level, D3, D2 level or anything, it might suggest that you aren't quite at the level to go abroad and to try to really try for pro setups just yet. It might be worth it just to attend college as a student to continue your education and in the meantime, continue to train and work to either make that college team or to make a UPSL, NPSL, or USL League Two team. Then once you really find success at the collegiate or semi-pro levels here in America first, you create a good highlight tape and maybe you make a few connections, it's gonna be a much, much easier route to the pro game abroad. But I see that all the time of like, oh, you know, I was on my JV team for high school. I didn't make my club team. Now I want to go abroad and try to play pro. And my response is always like, it's not going to be any easier over there. If you're struggling to even make club and academy setups here, it's not like you're going to go abroad and all of a sudden they're going to welcome you in with open arms and it's going to be easy. It's even going to be harder because you're a foreigner and now you're coming in with no connections and, and, and nothing. So I would really suggest only doing that if you really, really think that you're flying under the radar and every Everybody has, has misjudged your game, but my suggestion is to find a little bit of success in your own country, even if that's just at the semi-pro level or collegiate level first, before you re really make that, that jump over to Europe. And, and lastly, you know, this is just my, my suggestion. If, if you disagree with something completely, I'm not saying that you have to follow my suggestion. Do what you think is right. Go with your gut. Um, I just thought I would help you guys out with all of the, the knowledge and the experience I have um, about this. So that's it. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it for the video. I'm just gonna do a quick question for the continuous Q and A and then we'll end it. Um, this one's from Harvey Davies. He says, hey Matt, here's a question for you. How do you plan your days, training sessions and weeks? Do you use a calendar, notes, etc.?" Thanks. So that's a really good question because I've, I've gone back and forth a lot over the five years I've been on YouTube. I've gone from super, super strict programming where I have the exact weights, the sets, the reps, the rest time, the exact drills, everything that I want to do. And then I've also done the exact opposite sometimes where I just kind of like, you know, I'm just going to go in the gym. I have a general idea. I want to do some upper body and I kind of just go with the flow through the session. I think personally I have, you have better, I think me and I think in general you have better training sessions and better um, workouts when it's all planned exactly what you're going to do. However, sometimes it can be kind of like impractical, especially if you can't get to those machines or you don't have those machines or like if you're at the field and it says wall passes and you don't have a wall, sometimes you can't follow that exactly. Um, so right now I'm like in a weird mix between the two styles. I have a very general idea of what I want to do on the field. You know, I want to work on crossing. I want to work on 1v1s and I want to work on first touch, but I'm not planning the exact sets, reps, drills 
you know, for weeks to come. I kind of like the day of, I'll brainstorm exactly what I want to do. And, and I'll sometimes even mix up, up up on the fly. Like this morning when I was training with Alan, I had an idea of what I wanted to do in terms of dribbling, first touch, crossing, finishing, 1v1s. But then when I found out that he was a right back as well, I was like, you know what, let's do some right back specific passing out of the back, that first touch to the curled long ball into the goal. So it's like a mix of, I have a general idea, I have an I plan the session a little bit beforehand, but I also kind of adapt on the fly. And the same thing in the gym, I, you know, I'll have, I'm following the power um, program from the footballer physique, but at the same time, I'm also kind of changing some exercises. I'm, ta I'm changing some sets and reps depending on what's available to me, what I have, and also how my body's kind of feeling. So it's, it's in between ha having a really structured program and making stuff up on the fly. And I think for me, I think, you know, after doing so much, I think that's the best thing to do, especially if you have the knowledge to be able to modify exercises and create drills on the fly um, that I kind of have now just from experience. So um, that's what I'm doing right now. I hope that uh, kind of clears everything up. And yeah, that's gonna be it for the video. So if you liked it, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see all you guys on the next video. All right, guys, peace.